Hi everyone, here's what's bothering me today. It's been a heck of a week, and there's been a lot of little stories here and there that I haven't really had the chance at the time to cover. Which means, once again, it is time for the Sunday Sum Up. So, let's start at the beginning of this past week. It's Monday, August 2nd, so you need to know that if the minimum wage had increased at the rate of productivity since 1960, it would be more than $23 now. But it's a starvation wage of $7.25. Now, here in Canada, it's different, and basically each province mandates their own minimum wage within reason. It's weird here. But the minimum wage in the States is such a starvation wage that as things continue to grow and develop, it gets closer and closer to the international poverty line. And most jobs in the States are unfortunately minimum wage. And as we've seen with a lot of people, they think that, oh, those are just entry jobs. You've probably seen some of them in my replies, either here in the videos or over on Twitter. People saying burger flipping isn't a real job, but I still want someone to, you know, flip my burgers. Cool. Well, people got to eat and work and have bills to pay too. So one of these things has got to give. And judging from the reaction of a lot of workers, I think we know where this train is going now. Lots of workers are quitting in droves from the restaurant and fast food industry. And I've talked about this in other videos, and so to them I say kudos. But it's still just so ridiculous and horrifying to hear that the minimum wage is $7.25. That doesn't buy you anything. And speaking of workers that are being abused in the capitalist hellscape known as America, Walmart isn't mandating the shots for any store workers, just executives. Walmart has 1.6 million US employees with hundreds of thousands of cashiers and other frontline staff who are still not vaccinated after all this time. So Walmart will require vaccines for their regional managers and for corporate staff, but not for the literal army of workers that they have and that the American economy relies on. Remind me again how many small communities there are across America where Walmart is kind of the only store they have because Walmart killed the typical small business mom and pop and rural main streets which means in many ways Walmart is one of the few employers in many parts of rural red state America. Surprise, we just figured out why they're not forcing the vaccine because it's probably not worth it for Walmart to try and A, get that much out to people who probably aren't going to take it, unfortunately. And B, it also just shows their greed of, you know what, eh, screw the poor, so long as our regional managers and corporate execs are taken care of, that's all that matters. Still liking capitalism, America? Workers at Walmart deserve so much better, I swear to God. And I guess also, since that brings us to the topic of the pandemic, U.S. now averaging 100,000 new COVID-19 infections a day. The U.S. is now averaging 100,000 new COVID-19 infections a day, returning to a milestone last seen during the winter surge, and yet another bleak reminder of how quickly the Delta variant has spread through the country. As one of my Twitter comrades rightfully points out, milestone sounds too good of a word. Misstep seems more appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Because how the hell do you get to the point where you've now overtaken what was previously considered your peak? Like, it's... Uh, I know I've said it before in several videos at this point, but I really hate being right about the coronavirus and how it's going to spread and just be a thing that we kind of have to grow and deal with for a long time unless we actually just get our act together and switch away from a capitalist system. So yeah, that's fun news from America. And we're not even done with America yet. And we still got international stuff to deal with. Like I said, folks, it's been a hell of a week. Dozens of organizers were arrested for blocking a terminal outside the Reagan airport as Congress tries to leave for vacation. They're protesting Democrats' recent failure to pass the For the People Act, legislation that would protect voting rights. Barely a peep from mainstream media. Gee, I wonder why the mainstream media, which is owned by corporate capitalists, might have a vested interest to not talk about the things that would actually help people's lives in the United States of America. Hmm. So that kind of takes care of the bulk of the American stories, except for two other small ones that just really rubbed me the wrong way. There was, at one point, an effective vaccine on the market for Lyme disease, but it was withdrawn in 2002 because of declining sales. 
there were declining sales thanks to hesitancy and disinformation. Now, while unfortunately the Bloomberg Opinion article tries to paint this as demonization of the pharma industry and anti-vaccine falsehoods, it really has more to do with the fact that the profit motive went away and so therefore Big Pharma stopped producing a very useful vaccine. The anti-vaxxers sure as hell didn't help, but what they ignored and what a lot of people also continue to ignore about the current setup with vaccines for the coronavirus pandemic is that it's all about the profit motive. There was even supposed to be a free coronavirus vaccine, but Bill motherfucking Gates decided, no, you know what? You got to make profit off of that. But billionaire generosity is going to solve the world's problems, right? And that's why we let them assume ever-increasing massive amounts of money and capital. So that's when that was related to the pandemic. But then there was this other story that I saw, and probably many of you saw it as well. When you hear the cries of freedom, see the oppression of people being picked up in streets. Witness today of her own father. Minority leader, you said that the 1960 revolution it, it created tyranny on the island of Cuba, and I am asking you a question. It's not a Democratic or Republican issue, so why do you oppose the January 6th Commission, sir? Why do you oppose the January 6th Commission, sir? Four police officers forcibly removed a journalist for asking Kevin McCarthy a question about why he opposed the January 6th Commission, where a bunch of patriots basically tried to pull off a soft coup in America. Never forget, folks, ACAB and the only thing that they serve and protect are the interests of the state and the ruling elite. There, that's all the American stories out of the way. Let's take a quick little spin around the world, shall we? Remember how a year ago the already suffering nation of Lebanon was uh, rocked by the massive explosion in Beirut? That problem has not even remotely been solved in the past year. A year on, Beirut blast victims still struggling to return home. Amid economic crisis and political dysfunction, many of Beirut's homes near the port remain in ruins and their tenants in limbo. Lebanon is infamously complex and infamously corrupt, and these corrupt officials have done next to nothing to actually help the people in the city of Beirut who have been affected by the blast. And also, if you're wondering, no, no one has really faced any real consequences for the tragedy that unfolded a year ago. And because so many people who lived near the port also worked at the port, so many of these people and families have really struggled to find work. So they can't find places to live, and if they do, they can't afford to pay rent. Many are suffering physical and mental injuries from the tragedy. And because Lebanon has been without like a fully functioning government for a year now, not enough work is being done to actually help these people who need it most. It's just a grim reminder that even when a tragedy befalls somewhere in the Middle East, there's always subsequent tragedy to the initial tragedy. So my sympathies to the people of Lebanon. I'll see if like there's a charity or a GoFundMe or something that's raising money for these families. Next, let's pop over to Europe for... Two really horrifying stories. One, I'm sure everyone's seen by now. The other people probably aren't paying attention to, and that concerns me. The story that concerns me most is what's currently happening in Britain. Now, I've talked about this before, about the pandemic and how uh, food shelves are being empty in Britain right now because of Brexit, because they can't get lorry drivers or migrant workers, which means food is literally rotting in the fields and they can't import what they used to import. But apparently... There's also some real serious propaganda mind games going on over in Britain because of this. A number of British supermarket chains now reported as cutting back on shopping shelving space within their supermarkets to even out slash hide empty shelves. Whoa, 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 we totally don't have a food shortage. Please pay no attention to the fact that you have more space to move around the supermarket now. And according to another person who took a photo, sorry, there's currently a shortage of lettuce, spinach, broccoli, peppers, and tomatoes, and we may run out. This is because of flooding in Spain and bad weather throughout Europe. I know there were floods in like Germany and Belgium and the Netherlands, and we talked about that a little bit, but Spain doesn't have flooding. It has wildfire problems. So this is a supermarket literally lying to try and cover their ass. So yeah, that's the state of things in Britain right now where... 
companies and their governments are lying to them about the actual true cost of Brexit that is directly harming and impacting Britain, its market, and its people. And they are using propaganda and outright lies in the hopes that their own people will not pay attention or do any research into what's going on. That is scary. And then the other scary thing that I'm sure people have seen are the wildfires in Greece. Now, unfortunately, Greece does tend to have a wildfire season, much like many other parts of southern Mediterranean Europe do. But like I said, with also all the wildfires in Turkey, they have been particularly rough and intense this year. And this can be seen in videos such as this fairy video. which I mean, now everyone's seen that one, but then there's also this equally horrifying video. Now again, really want to stress that Greece's wildfire season, while, you know, a regular thing, this has been historic. A historic heat wave has ripped through Greece with the highest temperatures reaching 47.1 degrees Celsius, which for the Americans watching is nearly 117 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what the people of Greece are having to deal with right now. Gee, I wonder what could be causing the historic heat waves and wildfire seasons in several parts of the world might it have something to do with climate change? And then because I'm a Canadian and I have to have a little bit of CanCon in the Sunday sum up, the total number of children found buried under Canadian residential schools is now 5,296, if anyone still cares. Yeah, that story kind of disappeared from the news media. What does that say about us as a people? We were sad and reflective in the news of a thousand around Canada Day. That number has quintupled, and there's not a peep from our media. I guess if there's any theme that can be brought away from this absolutely ridiculous week is that the media doesn't actually do its job and tells us about what needs to be happening. The media doesn't tell people about the connection between the minimum wage and the poverty in America. And they don't talk about how that also negatively leads to people being trapped in poverty and how the minimum wage is leading to lots of people not working in the fast food and restaurant industry anymore because of a myriad of factors. The media doesn't tell people that, oh yeah, Walmart's telling people to be vaccinated, but they're not telling the right people to be vaccinated because it's about the wealthy and inequality and poverty. And they aren't talking about the failure of the Democrats to pass the For the People Act that would actually help Americans. And they aren't criticizing this. And they aren't talking about the connection between the terrifying footage of the wildfires in Greece and record historic high temperatures because of climate change. And they aren't telling us about the tragedies that unfolded in Beirut and that continue to unfold and affect people to this day. And they don't talk about the connections to the failures of numerous state and federal officials that have led to 100,000 coronavirus infections a day in the States again. They don't tell us about nearly 5,300 dead indigenous kids. All these stories and more the media doesn't tell us or talk about even though they are relevant and important. And if the media actually did its job and showed the connection between these different stories and painted the picture and actually did the investigative journalism that they're supposed to do and bring the actual news to light and actually do their job of informing people, that would actually be terrible for their owners because most media is owned by some kind of capitalist. And so if the media actually did their job, more and more people would realize and, you know, connect the dots to realize that the capitalist system is killing our societies and it's killing our planet. And so the media, which is supposed to do a really serious and important job, is absolutely failing at that at a time when we need them to do their jobs more than ever. 
And that's what's bothering me today.